Hitting the head pin square on is not the perfect strategy. If you hit the head pin square on going straight, you're unlikely to knock down all the pins. You could end up with a split where the ball goes through the middle, or with the ball deflecting off to one side after hitting the head pin. Chances for a strike are much higher if the center of the ball hits the pins just to one side of the head pin, board 17 and a half. In which case, the ball takes out the one, three, five, and nine pins, which take out the others. So we want the ball to hit the one pin, the three, the pin behind the one, which is the five pin, and then the nine or the eight and the nine. You want the ball to hit all of those pins. Yeah. Now the pins don't always fall this way, but the pin shape helps. Pins roll in circles like eggs, which help knock down the others. Seven pins! Yes! Oh, my baby! Come on, don't miss! You wanted it, you got it! But to have an over 90% chance of getting a strike, the center of the ball has to hit with an error smaller than half a board. Needless to say, throwing a ball 60 feet straight at a target smaller than a dime is a tough task, especially to do it consistently. The spot between the head pin, the one that's in the center, and the three pin, which is just right of that, that gap's pretty narrow. But as the ball hooks more, now we basically shift over, and now that space is considerably wider. If you can hit the pins not head on, but at an angle of six degrees, you dramatically increase your chances of knocking them all down. Now the margin for error is greater. The ball can be coming in anywhere from board 17 to 18 and a half. Six degrees may not sound like a lot, but it's actually extremely difficult to hit. The problem is, if you wanted to throw the ball straight at the pins and hit them at six degrees, you would have to be bowling from three quarters over on the next lane. And that is impossible, what with the two gutters in between and all. So the solution is, you've got to curve the ball on one lane. 